How would you like a $50 cut in salary? Do I laugh now or wait till it gets funny? Oh, I'm serious. I've just been talking to Norton. Too much stuff piling up on my desk. Too much pressure on my nerves. I spent half the night walking up and down in my bed. I've got to have an assistant, and I thought of you. Me? Why pick on me? Well, because I've got a crazy idea. I might be good at the job. That's crazy, all right. I'm a salesman. Yeah. Peddler. Flat-hander. Backslapper. You're too good to be a salesman. Nobody's too good to be a salesman. Oh, fooey. All you guys do is just ring doorbells and dish out a smooth line of monkey talk. What's troubling you is that 50 buck cut, isn't it? Well, that'll trouble anybody. Now, look, Walter, the job I'm talking about takes brains and integrity. It takes more guts than there is in 50 salesmen. It's the hottest job in the business. Yeah, but it's still a desk job. I don't want to be nailed to a desk. Desk job? Is that all you can see in it? Just a hard chair to park your pants on from nine to five, huh? Just a pile of papers to shuffle around and five sharp pencils and a scratch pad to make figures on. Maybe a little doodling on the side. Well, that's not the way I look at it, Walter. To me, a claims man is a surgeon. That desk is an operating table. And those pencils are scalpels and bone chisels. And those papers are not just forms and statistics and claims for compensation. They're alive. They're packed with drama, with twisted hopes and crooked dreams. A claims man, Walter, is a, is a, is a doctor and a bloodhound and a... Who? OK, hold on a minute. A claims man is a doctor and a bloodhound and a cop and a judge and a jury and a father confessor all in one. And you want to tell me you're not interested. You don't want to work with your brains. All you want to work is with your finger on the doorbell. For a few bucks more a week, there's a name on your phone. Walter Neff speaking. I had to call you, Walter. It's very urgent. Are you with somebody? Yes, I am. Uh, can I call you back, Margie? No, you can't. I've only got a minute. I can't wait. Listen, he's going tonight on the train. Are you listening? Walter. Yeah, I'm listening, Margie. Only uh, make it snappy, will you? He's on crutches. The doctor says he can go if he's careful. The change will do him good. It's wonderful, Walter, just the way you wanted it on a train. Only with the crutches, it makes it much better, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, that's 100% better. Hold the line a moment, will you? Key, suppose I join you in your office. That's all right. I'll wait, only tell her not to take all day. Go ahead. It's the 1015 from Glendale. I'm driving him. It's still the same dark street, isn't it? And the signal is three hungs on the horn. OK, anything else? No. Oh, uh, what color did you pick? Uh, blue, navy blue. And the cast is on his left leg. Mm hmm Well, that suits me fine. This is it, Walter. I'm shaking like a leaf, but it's straight down the line for both of us. I love you, Walter. Goodbye. Sorry, Keys. What's the matter? Name's chasing you again or still? This is none of my business. If I told you it was a customer, you... Margie. I bet she drinks from the bar.